Hey everyone, in this lesson, we're going to finally get our first taste of PHP, which is the language WordPress is written in. So learning a new language might sound intimidating, but that's why we'll do this together step by step at a nice pace. So without further ado, let's begin. So in our last lesson, we we're able to set up a local installation of WordPress. In our previous lesson, we didn't go over how we could access the files that make up our website. So we can do that by going to local by flywheel and right clicking on your website and going to our site folder. Once we're in here, we click into our sites folder. We then go into app and then public. And these are all the files that power our site. So before making our site do something useful, let's start something simple. First, let's create an experiment file where we can try a couple tests and begin to dip our toes into PHP. So it's important to point out that we can't use a word processing program to create a new PHP file or to make edits to a PHP file. Instead, we're going to need a text editor to modify our code. But the good thing is that there are plenty text editors online that we can download for free. An example would be Sublime Text. Sublime, free text editor. There's also Visual Code, which is what I'll be using. And there's also Atom. So go ahead and, and click one of those three that we saw. And once you have one installed, go ahead and open it. So here we want to create a new file and we're going to call this experiment.php and we want to save it into our WordPress system folders. So we're going to go into local sites, our website, app, public. So we want to save it into this folder, save it. So now if we were to go back into our file explorer, we should view that folder in our website folder so here we could then go to site folder and we see our experiment right here so now if we open site so if we go to experiment.php we would have our php file and if we go ahead and type something here if we go back we do see hello, this is a test outputted. So let's go back and let's delete this and let's write a tiny bit of HTML so we can see how PHP fits into our site. So first let's create an H1 and then another H2. So if we go back now, we see it's working so i know right now it's not too exciting it's just html you might be saying oh, what's so cool about this this is just html but let's go back into our file go ahead and write this here so what does this mean this beginning starts php mode and this closes php mode so all this down here is regular html but up here while we're in php mode we can write php code so check this out. Echo, which is what we used to output things onto the page. Then we can do something like three plus three. Save and come back and refresh in the browser. And we do see six. So you might be asking like, what's so exciting about three plus three? The cool thing is that we can't do this in HTML. We literally type what we want and we're gonna get that spit out. With PHP, we actually have a programming language. We could tell it to do things like talk to databases, resize images, and other programming functionality. We can have our PHP do just about anything for us. And the cool thing is that those that are visiting our site don't see the PHP. They only see the final product. So if we actually go into our inspect by right clicking, we see our HTML but we don't see our PHP code. We only see the result. So the server is what's calculating 
or 3 plus 3. So let's jump back into our code editor. I want to show you how we could enter in and out of PHP mode. We go under our H1. So if we save this and go back, we do see we're able to come in and out of PHP mode. So let's say we change coding and we change this to code. What if we were able to programmatically replace those words that we want to repeat? Like let's say this was blank and blank. I wanted to add some more PHP here. So what I can do is drop this down and we could continue doing PHP code here. And to solve this issue of not repeating, what if we're able to save a variable and we call it all about? And I save this to code and say my colons to let PHP know we want to end this statement there. So here we're saving this variable called all about. So now, anytime we want to reference this variable, we can add it in our code and we could do that like this enter into php mode and then just type out the variable name and then just close out of php so here we start off in html then we enter into php mode then we close out the headline and we could do the same thing here copy paste now if we save this and then we refresh our page now we see this this page is all about code and all about code so let's go back and just change it and we change the word code to something like pizza save it we refresh and we do see pizza so that might not seem that amazing but imagine you had the same variable in hundreds of places throughout your site so we would change it one time and it would change all the places on your website where that variable shows up. So I do want to mention that this experiment.php file is meant to teach you some very basics of PHP, which is what WordPress is written in. So you've learned how to go in and out of PHP mode, you've learned how to use variables, and you've learned how to echo out output. And with that, you are now ready to begin using PHP to tell WordPress what to do and build out a WordPress site. So in our very next lesson, we will begin looking at how to create our own WordPress themes using PHP. But before we end this, let's go ahead and go back into our WordPress folder site. And let's erase our experiment.php. So with that, we're going to end this lesson and we are now ready to continue on to our next lesson, which will be building out our WordPress theme. If you found this interesting, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.